Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. How amazing would it be if you could practice because you want to, not because you have to? Learn how to improve your cash flow and increase your passive income now. Go to moneyripples.com or find their podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, to learn more. All right, welcome, TCP listeners and viewers, because I don't know if I told you, Dr. Lauren, but we're actually live on Facebook. Yeah, so when I just asked, like, was I supposed to put on makeup? And you're like, no, you lie, you lie. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. Like, should I swear? Oh, you know what? Let's we'll put an explicit on this one. So, fuck it. I mean, I didn't put on any makeup either. So, okay, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> hey, so let's do this. Let's start with. Um, I mean, I'm still learning a, a little bit more about you. I know we we had a great conversation a, a couple of weeks back, but why don't you help um, our listeners by sharing a little bit about yourself? You know, you as a chiropractor, you as a, a leader in the profession as well today. Yeah. So, I mean. I'm 35 and I feel like I, like when you say like, Oh, leader, I'm like, Oh man, there are people who are so much, so much better and things like this. Um, where I have continue to get traction and is like, just in my, um, my honesty in my, in my experience, you know, I'm a 2010 graduate, um, from a not, philosophical based school, which is fine, whatever. Um, the problem was, is I learned five years into practice while I had like built from the ground up a pretty high volume practice that I, I felt like I was missing something. And unfortunately that was philosophy. And so I had to figure out how to find it myself. Like I had never read a green book. Okay. Honestly, I still haven't read the green books. I just like they seem like they're going to be really helpful for people. And I'm like, yeah, green book. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it, but I had to like start doing all of that work. And then like looking at my practice and being like, okay, well, I'm completely in network. I want to be completely out of network. How do I do this at the rate that we're already going? Okay. I've never said the word subluxation in practice. Ugh, like the first time I literally said it to a patient, I was like, sub. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it hurt. I told you, I did, you know, this wasn't my background. Um, but it was like my, my innate chiropractorness was like seeking it and wanting more out of practice. And so I just love sharing mistakes. I love sharing embarrassing stories about my process of getting here. And I think that people appreciate that. So I am the mm. worst guest on somebody else. Well, first of all, I'm a terrible guest because half the time I'm a host. So I'm always like, well, Ed, what do you think? Like, I want to know your answers. <laughs> um, but like, I'm just not a canned inspirational speaker. I will laugh and say, I am an uninspirational speaker. Yeah. I'm, I mean, that's so funny that you mentioned that. I mean, uh, like personally, I don't think I'm a great guest. Like, I just, I, I don't think I have a lot to say, but I like, I like listening and I like asking questions and shutting up and I'm good at that. But I mean, you know, it's so interesting too, that you went to a school that was very non-philosophical. You've made the transition into, it feels like you, you, you've definitely embraced the philosophy. Would you have done it differently? Would you have gone to a different school? Yeah, I would have. Yeah. Um, I chose, you know, so here's the deal is like, there's like, the woo-woo answer of like, I met my husband um, purely based on like, I was going up to chiropractic school and my college roommate was like, hey, this guy I went to high school with lives up there. Like I was getting out of a relationship and she's like, it might be a good rebound. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> Apparently I'm bad at rebounds. Um so like if I had, if it was going to change a lot of things, then I'd say like, no, I would take the non-philosophical school to get the husband. Mm. Um, but if I was still guaranteed the same husband, yeah, I would have, I'd have chosen a different school. I just picked it based on geography. So, oh, really? I, yeah, yeah I like Minneapolis. So, you yeah, know, uh, two and a half hours from home. Yeah. Go twins. Where would you have gone? 
Let's hmm. Well, number so the one other choice. Interesting, the other interesting thing about me um, is that I don't like know a lot of people. I'm very green within chiropractic. So mm. here I am speaking at mile high and like Mo and Tamara were out to dinner with them and they're like, oh, well, you know, Jule and like all these things. I'm like, no, who's that? And they're like, uh, <laughs> like the president of Sherman. And I'm like, huh, never heard of him. Uh, so like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not like I'm saying that to brag at all. I'm just really green. And I don't, um, I don't know a lot of these people. So back 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I don't know, but based on today, Life West, Sherman, maybe? Mm. I don't know. Where's Sherman? I don't know that I could get, get on board. Where's Sherman again? Oh God, North I don't Carolina? know. South Carolina? I don't know. South Carolina sounds nice. I could, <laughs> is that where it is? Yeah. Georgia? I don't... <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'm Canadian. Like Homer so. in Florida. Life is in Georgia, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, but life is nice. They've got like rugby teams and scholarships. So I'd probably pick something like that. Yeah, I did. I did Life West, Life Chiropractic College West. I really enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy the administration as much, but mm-hmm. I mean, I enjoyed the fact that we got the the chance, the opportunity, like it was so technique focused, mm. right? I was very academic focused up until, you know, my undergrad, I was like 4.0 GPA and you know, valedictorian. And then once I got into the chiropractic college, it just, I was, I just wanted to pass the academics, which I still did. All right. But I wanted to learn how to actually adjust. That was my how focus. How do you turn that achiever off? Because I feel like when I went to chiropractic school, nobody like sat me down and was like, okay, good job. You got 4.0s. We're so proud of you. <laughs> None of that shit matters. Like, like nobody had that awakening with me to like, be like, Hey, how you're going to make money and be successful as a chiropractor is honing in on skills and communication, not yeah. getting an A in biochem. So it, it took me a minute. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was just a shift of intensity from one inf- intensity focus from one thing, which was, I was always focused on academics to intensity focus of clinic. And I just wanted to be the first person to finish. And I was, mm-hmm. and as soon as I finished and got all my credits, I I checked out, which was like months, months, months before I graduated. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, I, I was focused. I mean, we were like starting a clinic, you know, my, my now ex had, you know, was already building out our practice. So I knew that I just wanted to dive right in and know as much as I could in terms of helping people. But yeah, I, I love that, you know, that, and I, I hear this from so many people, you know, that I've had these amazing conversations with is that, you know, they, they can go to the, you know, the, the more medically orientated, you know, integrative medicine type schools and education, but then it always seems full circle and they come back to the philosophy, which really, I think, do you think that's the underpinning of the success of your practice, that message and that communication of philosophy? Well, the, so I think ultimately the success of the practice is based on the mental and physical health of me, the leader. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I could be, I personally could be mentally happy if I was not congruent with my practice and my philosophy. So do I think that every chiropractor needs to come back to the 33 principles in order to be successful and happy? I don't, I don't. I think that like, for me, I was feeling the nudge. I was looking at a practice that I was just like, everything's there. The money's there, the people, why, what's the more. And so for me, that seed got planted. And until I figured out like, what was that seed needing? Um, I wouldn't have been happy. So that answers that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that congruency piece, right. Mm -hmm. Do you think people kind of smell it on you when you're not being congruent in practice? I don't know. I like to pretend that I'm a pretty good, like hider. Um, (laughs) You camouflage it well. Right. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I think that some people, I mean, we know there's a lot of weird people out there. Okay. Let's just be honest. Yeah. There's a lot of weird people, not just in chiropractic, in all professions. The world. In the world. There's a lot of just (laughs) oddballs. And we live in, or we're in a profession where people can choose us or not. 
And it kind of matters if you're weird. Like I might not care if my accountant is weird as long as like, I don't have to interact with them much, but people have to interact with us. We have to touch people. So I feel like if like I had a lot less going for me type of thing (laughs) than like being congruent and like, you know, then it's really, really, really important because people are just like, I don't know. This person's weird. So (laughs) <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think there is a certain level of just that energy of like, yes. they can smell it on you. Cause like, I know when I, you know, most, a lot of people have my, know my story, but when I was not well and I was in practice and I was just getting through the day and patients would get up, you know, off the table, amazing adjustment. And I'm focused, right. When I, I didn't, when I was practicing, like all of us, I think, you know, we're super focused when we're worth people, but they would look at me and they go, are you Okay. And so I think it was always like, oh yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm great. They could, yeah, they could smell it. Yeah. When on the inside, I was like turmoil. So, and you have Lyme disease or have? I have Crohn's. Crohn's disease. Oh, that's right. Okay. Sorry. Again, yeah. four Negronis in when we talk. That's not the <laughs> best time for Lauren's memory. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that, I mean, we love on the show too. And one of these days I literally, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually create a a book of quotes and affirmations and words of meaning from all the docs who have ever been on this show. We're, we're coming up on 400. So you drop, you know, you drop you, you drop someone else or some, something that's really words of meaning for our our listeners. How would Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss create a chiropractic practice? The answer is the payday practice, a new book by Dr. Jeff Langmaid and Dr. Jason Deitch. The Payday Practice is the perfect solution for any chiropractic practice looking to generate monthly recurring revenue. This book provides a step-by-step process that is easy to follow and guaranteed to get results. Get your free copy today at thepaydaypractice.com. Don't wait, this offer won't last forever. The Payday Practice, recurring practice revenue the easy way. Head over to thepaydaypractice.com for your free copy now. Oh, shit. You know, it's okay. You told me you were going to ask me this. I was prepared and I was like, okay. So I got the email. And I'm like, all right, I hope you come up with something real good. Cause I talk a lot. Like I yeah. had to start a podcast because I just talk like things just come out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> I would say the number one thing that, although I don't say it would definitely be like on my tombstone would be, I'll figure it out when I get there. Mm. Um, So I don't know the smart person who has this quote. My husband's um, been mentioning it a lot in the last month, but it's basically go as far as you can see. And then from there, you'll be able to see farther. Um, And that really, I am a very action oriented person. Figure out the details later. Um, I trust that I will be able to pivot and adapt quickly. Um, And so I often will make, big life decisions and things like that. Some might say impulsive. I might just say spirit led. Um, and, (laughs) and don't allow my gut or brain to really get in there and ask questions too much. Um, because I'm just like, we're, it's gonna, it's gonna work. It's gonna work out. Yeah. I I always like to think there's like, we have different hats that we wear, you know, and there's the creator hat, the producer hat, and then there's the logical hat, which is always the one that kind of, I find way too many people wear the logic hat, which is the one that tells them, wait, how are you going to do that? Wait, what's going to happen in three weeks? Like, so I'm always encouraging people like, and you know, they just, they just, the majority of the time they have a producer hat on, they're just like, go, yep. right. We'll figure well, it out. I find, I find that my logic hat isn't only works best when I am under pressure. Mm. Um, so when I am trying to anticipate a lot of things, and you know, this isn't to say I married a very logical analytical person, so that's yeah. good. Um, I met him, so yeah, I get it. I, I, I act like, oh yeah, my life's just a shit. So I was like, no, there is somebody who don't worry, who is like, okay, let me make sure. Um, but I find that the logic turns into anxiety if I'm trying, if I'm doing it worried about the future. Yeah. Where I become, I'm almost like got that medic thing where it's like, this happened right now. What do we do? Or like, look, this is a problem that needs to be solved. That's where all of a sudden creativity, open-mindedness, 
fear goes out the door and I'm just like honed in of like, okay, what if we do this? And that's when my best ideas come from, like where my most like grounded, patient, loving, like humanity evoking ideas. That's when they come from. Otherwise I'm like, tend to be like, I don't know. I'm pretty, like, I tend to like become very like egocentric or selfish when I'm not yeah. in the moment of like, I don't know, fuck that guy. <laughs> but in the moment I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. We're going to like, so it's just, just yeah. <laughs> you shut that shit down. You just that voice, you, you push yep. it down. Yeah. <laughs> um okay so like at this point usually what i do is i ask you for like the shit sandwich like it's like what is the struggle but i'm gonna actually change this a little bit i'm gonna throw this at you so here it is um you know there's so many people especially doctors you know we encourage them to get out there and do something that's like a show right like put themselves out there so it could be video could be lives you know to help educate the public for you you you'd like jumped on podcasting and just, it seems like you hit the ground running, but was it, was it an easy thing? Was it something that just came to you intuitively naturally, or was it like, no, there was a struggle in this or even getting it launched and getting listeners. Was there a struggle there? I mean, I would love more listeners. So like, I'm mad that I don't have 10,000 downloads a week. Like that pisses me off. So that's a struggle. Um, no, no, it wasn't. Um, I, again, commit and then figure out the issue later or like figure out the problems and solutions later. Um, When I started, I had the idea and felt really inspired to do so. I was coaching. I met, and then I stopped and then I missed that like problem solving. I missed that just talking through things, just a platform to be like, I'm a verbal processor. Mm. I think Oh, if you can't, I'm sure you can't tell at all. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I'm going to start a podcast. My husband's like, do you even listen to podcasts? I'm like, no, no, I don't. And he's like, okay, sure. I think I've seen you speak on, at that point I'd spoken on stages like five or six times. Um, and he's like, yeah, you'll, you'll make this work. You'll, you'll or, or not. And then no big deal. Like if nobody listens, nobody sees you fail. And so he was really the helpful one of like, cause I, you know, I have very, very poor reading comprehension skills. So like, as soon as I start getting in, it's like, all right, come up with a name. And I'm like, hell yeah, I got a name. She says day. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, a theme. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then it's like, okay, download Adobe edition, buy this microphone. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so then, then I was like, Kirby, that's my husband. I'm like, what is this? What is the thing? And he's like, oh, we already own Adobe Edition. That's what I use to edit here. Here's this microphone. Like, yep, you just plug this cord into there. And I'm like, so all I would have to do is start talking into this microphone you've placed in front of my face. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, cool. So for me, no, it was not hard. He did all of the Libsyn stuff. Yeah. It lived like for listeners, Libsyn is like where you host you know, it hosts or stores your podcast for you. Yeah. yeah. The, um, that's the, and that's the thing too, like being someone who's, who's had a program for training chiropractors on podcasting. I think we've done well over 400 sales and, you know, that's the biggest block is they, they're like, oh man, here's my artwork. Wait, mm-hmm. here's my name. I got a logo. <laughs> oh, here's a recording. Wait a second. I do what I got to put it. Uh, what's an art, what's a feed, you know? So there was always the tech block. When actually it's even easier now than it ever has been before. Well, social media is really what I leverage. Yeah. So I um, basically announced a month before our first episode that I was looking for a launch team. Mm-hmm. Um, I So I had like 50 some, I don't actually, I don't remember. It was like three years, somewhere between 50 and 80. Um, they were all females mm-hmm. and on social media that I was going to give access to the first episode. I sent them like a small gift in the mail and then like they were going to blast it on their social media. Wow. And so, yeah. And so um, that, that worked great. And social media has been just the game changer. I can't imagine starting podcast without social media. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can't remember how ours grew Well, we kind of planted our flag early. Right. Right. But it was, it was Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It was Facebook. I mean, we would put it out on Facebook and Twitter and Twitter. We at, back then Twitter, we would bomb Twitter nine times a day. Okay. It's different now though. Like 
people go to Spotify to look for podcasts now. It, they it were iTunes. They didn't really do it back then. So completely different. And so I want to just make sure people actually can go and check out your podcast. So it's she slays podcast.com. She slays podcast.com. Okay, perfect. So she slays podcast.com. And so listeners, viewers, you can actually um, head to the show notes. Uh, and uh, if it's not, well, it will be in the show notes. There'll be a direct link. You can actually go and check out uh, Dr. Lauren's podcast website there. If not, you can actually head to our website, which is thechiropracticphilanthropist.com, and we'll have a webpage dedicated to our discussion and all the links and resources. So I'm going to ask you for some resources here bef- uh, first. I'm going to just flip it, and then I'm going to put you into the TCP time machine. Okay. Okay. So here it is. So okay. resources. Tell me, what is what is something that you, someone you're following, something you're listening to, maybe something that you're reading right now that everyone needs to go check out right away? Okay. So there's a couple things. One is very specific to my Enneagram type. Do you know your Enneagram, Ed? Yes. What are you? Uh, Is it leader? Well, it'd be a number one through nine. My Enneagram, I must've done a different Enneagram. Okay. So I'm an Enneagram three. Uh, They're very vain. They're vain as fuck. They're performers. They love being on the stage. They like all the attention. Um, A lot of like speakers and like actors, things like that. They tend to be Enneagram three. So one of the things that is like my, is very, very helpful is there is a um, 40 day like affirmations, Mm. just kind of like for Enneagram threes, like through a biblical standpoint of just like, Hey, God gave you these talents, like helps. It just helps with a lot of things. So I can send you that link because it's it's on Amazon and it's like the gospel for Enneagram threes. Really, really helpful because it's just like real straight talk to my personality that gets very like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, hey, remember that you were put here for a purpose and like big <laughs> stuff, grounding stuff. Um, I also love Jay Shetty. His mm. book, Think Like a Monk and his podcast. Love him. Love him. I've never listen to him. Yeah. Oh, I like it. You know, I, I listened to his book, Think Like a Monk, and about 10, 20% in, I was like, is this just a lot of the same self-help stuff? It's not. Like it's it's really good. Mm. Um, I would recommend it. It's worth a read for sure. Yeah, awesome. So we'll make sure the links are there for our listeners as well. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put you into the TCB time machine. You ready? Yeah. This is the cheesiest part of the show, just so you know. Oh, God. <laughs> Try not to puke. Okay. It's like back to the future. Okay. So we're going to put you into the TCP time machine, send you back to a younger version of yourself. And this age? is, so this is right after you come out of chiropractic college, like okay. you just graduated, you meet that, that former self, but you have all the life experience and all the knowledge that you have today. What would you say to that younger self? I would say go hard, easy versus easy, hard. Um, so that would mean, you know, I started in network with everybody. If I had somebody, which, you know, for me, like I said, this was my journey. If somebody else loves insurance, fantastic. Um, but you know, if I had a patient call and say, Hey, do you take dog butt insurance? I'd be like, I don't yet, but I am (laughs) filling out an application as we speak. Um, and I really avoided talking about care plans. Care plans were like, whatever that person, whatever I thought they could mentally handle while still Mm. saying yes. Um, I didn't have an insight scanner, which that was a big one. I didn't start coaching. Yeah. That was like, I, if I could only say one thing, I'd say, by the insight scan. Like if I because just incorporating that into a practice was like, oh, so if I could have just started cash practice with an insight scanner and somebody philosophically based coaching of some sort, mm. just somebody to be like, yeah, we know you know everything, but here's some things you don't know. Um, because I was 24, I was young. And so like the reason wow. I own started my own was because I knew I knew everything. Um, and there's, I knew I'd be a bad associate. I at least knew that much. So, so yeah, that's where I'd go back and like, really just understand that I would rather grow congruently yeah. and that may be harder and a lot more no's and a lot less yeses in the beginning, but I wouldn't have to make those big pivots. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And, um, 
you know, that's, that's, that's so true though, with CLA, like with insight is when I finally decided it took a while to decide, okay, I'm going to do this. And then when I did, it was a practice changer, like, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't necessarily for my business, like as a practice, because it was, it was like patients all the, all of a sudden, like, like practice members, patients, like they could see, they go like, Oh my God, this like makes so much sense versus, you know, and then actually we're doing reassessments. It was the same thing. It was like, Oh, we're making progress. I didn't have to use Mm -hmm. all my words. I could show it. So it was so cool. Oh yeah. If you don't have something to show somebody their progress, you know, when they're 12 visits into a 48 visit care plan, all they're going is, is do I feel better or do I not? And if they feel better, they're going, am I fully better? (laughs) And if they don't feel better, they're going, I don't, this isn't working. And so having that objective tool is awesome. Yeah. Everyone needs one. Awesome. So our podcast, just, you know, it's kind of like CrossFit. It's kind of like the, the 20 minute wad of, Mm -hmm. of podcasts. So I'm just going (laughs) to, I did, I think I did one with Tony Evil. I told him that before we re- recorded, and he we did it in seven minutes. Because oh you know him, right? He's just like oh, oh, Tony. Yeah. shortest podcast ever. So um, <laughs> now I want to thank you so much for being on on the show today. Incredible value. I know our listeners are usually here for twenty minutes and then they fade out, as most chiropractors do. So I want to make sure also they get they get that link again. So it's she slays podcast dot com. Go ahead and check out. Uh, Dr. Lauren, um, we're going to have all the links resources there. I want to thank you so much for giving back and just like being, uh, you know, open to sharing and being on the podcast today. Thanks for having me on, Ed. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.